الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال سيدنا مولانا الإمام الصادق عليه السلام كان عمي العباس بن علي عليه السلام نافذ البصيرة صلب الإيمان جاهد مع أخيه الحسين وأبلى بلاء حسنا ومضى شهيدا وقال سلام الله عليه في زيارته لأبي الفضل العباس وأشهد لك بالتسليم والتصديق والوفاء والنصيحة لخلف النبي المرسل والسبط المنتجب والدليل العالم حتى قال فجزاك الله عن رسوله وعن أمير المؤمنين وعن الحسن والحسين صلوات الله عليهم أفضل الجزاء بما صبرت واحتسبت وأعانت فنعم عقب الدار صلوا على محمد وآل محمد The fourth of Sha'ban coincides with the birth of the brother of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the noble man who is known for his nobility, the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. He comes from a family known for its nobility and honor. And that's why Islam stresses these characteristics and traits in both the partners, the husband and the wife, and also in providing that environment to the children, to the child. So that when he grows up, he becomes a character like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, we constantly hear about him, the hero of Karbala, the brave person of Karbala, but Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, his nobility did not only start in Karbala, was not only demonstrated in Karbala. Yes, it reached its pinnacle in Karbala. He showed that utmost no nobility in Karbala. But that was there in his essence, in his character. That he inherited from both of his parents, and from the upbringing, the environment that his parents provided for him to become Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. And that's what Islam emphasizes for us and expects of us. If we take a look at this man, we find Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam have said a hadith praising him. So today we'll be taking a look at some of these hadith which will tell us who was Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas really. And also it will tell us that Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam did not become the man whom he became only on the day of Ashura. No, he was an honorable person from the beginning. His bravery was not on the day of Ashura only. It was there, he was a brave person. And so on and so forth. So, it started from before, from the parents. Huzam, the father of Umm al the father of Fatima, bint Huzam al kilabiya Her father says, I left my wife when she was pregnant and I went out of town. One day in my dream, I saw that I was working or playing with a jewel, a very nice big jewel. He said, a man who seemed to be honorable came to me on a horse, riding on a horse. 
He told me, how much is your jewel worth? I told him, I don't know. But it seems to be very valuable. He says, how much do you think it's worth? I asked him. He said, I don't know either. However, if you give it to me, I will guarantee you honor. He said, you will guarantee me honor? He said, yes, I guarantee that to you. He says, then I woke up. And I was still on my travel. I was out of town still. So I spoke to some of the people around me. I told them, this is the dream I saw. What do you guys think of it? So some of the people around him told him, if the dream is true, then it entails that you'll probably be getting a daughter. And this daughter will be married to somebody who is honorable and will bring you honor. So he says, when I came back, my wife had given birth and she had given birth to this lady. So I was so happy that I have a girl. So she asked me, what shall we name her? He said, I, I told her, name her Fatima. Call her Fatima. So they named her Fatima. And the days went along with her noble upbringing until Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam one day asked his brother Aqil, Ya Aqil, find me a lady coming from an honorable tribe that is known for their bravery so that she can deliver children for me whom are brave. He said, then you need to marry Fatima bin Huzam al-Kilabiyya, very well-known family for their bravery and honor. He says, okay, go and ask her father's permission to marry me. So Aqil, he goes to the family, he meets Huzam, he becomes his guest, and the Arabs have a tradition at the time. At the time, they had a tradition that when a guest arrives, they host him for three days without even asking him for anything or telling him why you're here. That's back in the good old days. Today, mashallah, you know, the minute they pick up the phone, not even going there. What do you want? What is it? But back in the old days, that was their tradition. So, three days he was his guest. On the fourth day, he came and he told him, Ya Aqil, what brings you here? Is it something you need from us? You need money? Do you need men? Do you need anything? We're all at your service. He said, no, but I'm bringing you some good news. He said, what? He said, I would like to ask for your daughters hand in marriage. He said, to whom? He said, to Amir al-Mu'mineen, wa Qa'id al-Ghurr al-Muhajjaleen, wa Imam al-Muttaqeen, my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Of course, when Huzam heard this, his face was enlightened with happiness. He said, well, let me go and ask my wife and talk to the bride or the girl herself to see if she gives permission. So he went. As he approached the room of his daughter, he heard his wife and his daughter having a conversation. The daughter says, Mother, last night I saw in my dream that I was sitting in a beautiful garden and I was looking at the moon and the stars and reflecting upon the beautiful creation of God Almighty. How he created this beautiful universe. And all of a sudden I saw the moon jumping from the sky into my lap. And then three other stars followed and came to me as well. Mother, what do you interpret of this dream? What do you think about it? She said, daughter, if my interpretation is correct, it appears that you will be married to an honorable man and you will be having four children, the first of whom will be so beautiful and handsome like the moon. The others will be like the stars. At that moment, Huzam enters into the room and he says, daughter, I guess your dream has come true. 
The mother asked, how so? He said, I just left Aqil, the brother of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He asked me for permission to marry Fatima, my daughter, to his brother Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he, so the mother was surprised. And then he told her, he said to the mother, do you think our daughter can be a servant to the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi? She said, I have raised her well with the best of my ability and I know her. She will be a good servant. So he came back, Huzam, after getting the permission from both, he came back to Aqil and he said, our daughter, inshallah, will be a good servant to you, your brother. He said, no, don't say servant. She'll be a, a wife to my brother, Ali ibn Abi Talib. He then asked her, Aqil asked Huzam, he said, what would you like in terms of a dowry or gifts? He said, she's a gift to you people. She's a gift. Don't need to give us anything. He said, no. In Islam, we have to give a mahar. So her mahar will be the same mahar that the dowry that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used to give to his spouses, to his wives, 500 dirhams. And then the presents will be sent by my brother Ali. Some more presents. He got up then, Aqil got up, and Huzam got up, and they invited their tribe, the tribe of Huzam. They all came in, Aqil stood up, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made us the Arab proud to have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam of us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to learn about one another and meet one another. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also blessed us with marriage. When he said, and among his signs is that he created for you from amongst yourselves spouses that you rest into, in, with, uh, in them. And created or made between you love and compassion. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً He said, so based on this, and based on the tradition of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alih, here I am conducting, after taking the permission of Fatima, he took the permission of Fatima, and he conducted the nikah between his brother Amir al-Mu'mineen, and Fatima bint Huzam al kilabiya Then he went back and he told Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, the marriage has been performed. So Amir al-Mu'mineen then sent the presents to his wife and she moved over to his house. On the first day, Imam Ali called her, Ya Fatima. She told him, don't call me Fatima. Because I'm afraid that Hassan and Hussein and Zainab and Umm Kulthum will hear you calling me with their mother's name. And that might hurt them a little bit, remind them of their own mother, Fatima. So Imam then gave her the title of Umm al the Kunya, Umm al -Baneen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her indeed with the four boys. One of them was the Qamar of Bani Hashim, the shining star, the bright moon of Bani Hashim, and that is Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. On the first day of his birth, the joy filled the house, of course, and he was brought forth to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, but when he looked at him, he looked at his hands, his little tiny hands, and he started crying. After kissing the hands of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and his mother was worried, Umm al-Banin said, 
Ya Amir al Mu'minin, is there something wrong with the hand of my child? He said, No, Ya Umm al Banin. But these hands will be sacrificed one day for his brother Abu al Fadl, for his brother Abi Abdullah al Hussein. This is the family, this is the lady, Fatima bint Huzam al Kilabiya. You see her nobility. And when the tribe or the caravan wanted to leave from Medina, she called her son Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and she told him, Ya Abu al-Fadl, you know that Hussein is the son of Fatima and Fatima is far better than I am. And you know that Zainab is the daughter of Fatima. So you have to serve Abi Abdullah al-Hussein and Zainab and make sure you take very good care of them. And he said, mother, done. This is the mother of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. That is the nobility. This is the trait. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, of course it's needless to say or speak about his merits and his valor and his characteristics. But when you combine the akhlaq of nubuwa, the manners of prophethood, with such noble character of Umm al-Baneen alayhi salam, then of course there is no surprise that you have Great children like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and his siblings, his four brothers. So this is the inheritance factor. Then it is the raising factor. Like we said, Umm al-Baneen alayhi salam, she found herself serving Amir al-Mu'mineen. She finds herself taking the pride in serving Ahmed al-Bayt alayhi salam, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. And she taught this to her son, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. This is how you should treat your brothers. They are the children of Fatima. And hence, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas never called his brother, brother. He always called him master, Sayyidi Abu Abdullah. This is important, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the upbringing that we provide to our children. That environment we provide to our children. From day one, from even before they are born. When during the period of pregnancy and from the day they are born, we have to think about how to raise them to be pious individuals, pious individuals. It takes a lot of effort. And especially in this day and age, the age of technology, the age of these social networking websites, It takes a lot of effort to build a character like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. And then if we take a look at this character from the point of view of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, what do they say? In the hadith that we recited at the beginning from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he states, my uncle al-Abbas he was Nafid al-Basira. Nafid al-Basira means he had complete understanding of haqq and batil. What was right and what was wrong. From day one, he knew that he is to serve his brother Abi Abdullah al Hussein because he is his master. And when he reached the water on the day of Ashura and did not drink from the water, he says, this is not what my religion has taught me to drink before my brother and my master to leave him thirsty and for me to drink. That is not what my religion has taught me. This comes from that upbringing. This comes from that training. When the child is fed right, from day one, it's like the building. If it's built right from day one, it will stand. But if a mistake is made, one mistake is made in the calculations, that building will collapse or could collapse. And this is what Umm al banin did with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, bringing that individual who can tell, distinguish what is haqq and what is batil. Then what else? Sulb al-Iman or Salb al-Iman. His Iman, his faith was like concrete, strong. Otherwise, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was born 
22 years later after the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which means he was 22 years junior to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. On the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein was about, give or take, 56 or 58 years of age. This makes Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas in his mid-30s on the day of Ashura, in his mid-30s. On the day of Ashura, Shimr ibn al Jawshan comes and he calls, he says, where are our cousins, al-Abbas and his siblings, his brothers? He did not respond to him. Imam Hussein told him, go see what he wants. He says, okay. He goes. He says, what's the matter? Why are you calling us? He said, you are our cousins. We have some distance relationship between you and us from the mother's side. And so I've spoken to the leaders, to Umar ibn Sa'ad, and we've written to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. If you switch sides and come to us now, we will give you the best of everything. He said, you're telling me and granting me security when the son of Rasulullah doesn't have any security and any peace. Is this what you called me here for? And he turns back and he tells his brother, let's go back. A man in his mid-30s gets all of dunya presented to him. How many of us would actually turn down such an opportunity? Sometimes we think, no, of course I would have done it. Well, Umar ibn Sa'ad didn't do it. Umar ibn Sa'ad, he turned against. I mentioned in the past, Shimr himself fought next to Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin against Muawiyah. He couldn't resist the temptations of dunya. And he went. He forgot about his akhirah. And he came to kill Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So a man in his mid-thirties, what kind of faith and belief he had that all of dunya comes before him and he turns his back to it and joins his brother, Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, decides to choose akhirah. That is the iman. That's why, brothers and sisters, we have to continuously remind ourselves and pray to Allah to keep us on the straight path, not to deviate us. Otherwise, well, Iyadu Billah, in that last minute, shaitan still tries to deviate the individual. And these last moments in one's life are what are the crucial parts. So he was indeed a man of faith, Iman. And what else? Jahada ma'a akhihi al Hussein. He struggled with his brother, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. But what kind of struggle? Wa abla bala an hasana. But he did very well. وَمَضَى shahida, And he died as a martyr. Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam says in a hadith that رَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَمِّيَ الْعَبَّاسِ May Allah bless my uncle al-Abbas. He said, فَلَقَدْ آثَرَ وَأَبْلَى وَفَدَى أَخَاهُ بِنَفْسِهِ He says he fought and defended his brother with himself, with his life, until his hands were cut off. حتى قطعت يداه فأبدله الله بجناحين يطير بهما مع الملائكة في الجنة كما جعل لجعفر بن أبي طالب وإن للعباس عند الله منزل يغبطه عليها جميع الشهداء يوم القيامة He says his hands were cut off but Allah replaced his hands with wings that he flies with among the angels like جعفر بن أبي طالب and he says, my uncle Al-Abbas has a status on the day of judgment that all the martyrs would feel jealous of him, would wish that they have his rank. All the martyrs. This man indeed sacrificed and gave. And this did not only start on that day of Ashura. It started from before. His nobility, his understanding, his manners. On the day of Safin, it is said, he came to Imam Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. And he told him, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, oh father, give me the permission to go and fight. He says, 
young a son, you're still too young. He was about 15, 16 years old at the time. He told him, but father, give me the permission. I want to go out. So Imam Ali said, okay, here, take my sword and go. He gave him his sword. He rode a horse and he t went out to the battlefield. He called people, who will come and fight with me? There was a man by the name of Abu Sha'tha. He was one of the heroes of Sham. He was with Muawiyah. Muawiyah turned to Abu Sha'tha and he said, Ya Abu Sha'tha, go kill this man. Go kill this young man. He said, are you insulting me? The people of Sham consider my strength and equate it to 1,000 men. men. 1, I can fight 1,000 people by myself. You want me to fight a little child like this? I will send him the youngest of my children and he will finish him. He sent him the youngest and Abu Fadl al-Abbas with one strike killed him. He sends a second son and a third up to the seventh. Seven children. They were killed by Abu Fadl al-Abbas. That's when the man himself became angry. He goes to fight and Abu Fadl al-Abbas finishes him as well. Ila jahannama wa bi'sal masir. That's when Muawiyah and the people from both sides, it's the first time they see Abu Fadl al-Abbas in such valor and bravery. He came back to his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, who called him, hugged him and started crying. He says, Father, now give me the permission to go back. He says, no, son, we've seen enough. You have another day waiting for you. And I want to save you for that day. So give me back the sword. And he took his sword. This is the man, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. And that's why Imam al-Sadiq in the ziyarah of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he tells, he tells him, and I bear witness, wa ashhadu laka taslim that you submitted to your brother Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Whatever he wanted, you did. You never negotiated or argued with him. You submitted to him. How many of us submit to Abi Abdullah al Hussein? And listen to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And then, what tasdeeq? You believed in your brother Abi Abdullah al Hussein. You believed in him. And you followed him. What else? Wal wafa. And of course, your honesty, nobility to your brother. And finally, one nasiha li khalaf al Nabi al Mursal. And you had the sincerity in following obediently the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And so as a consequence to all of this, he tells him, فَجَزَاكَ Allah, May Allah reward you on behalf of his messenger and on behalf of Amir al-Mu'mineen and al-Hasan and al-Husayn sallallahu alayhi wa alayhim afdal al jaza the best of the reward because of your patience. بِمَا صَبَرْتْ it is said there was a poet, an Arabic poet, Sha'ar. His name was Kadam al Azdi, Sheikh Kadam al Azdi. He wrote a poem one day. In one of the lines of the poem, he wrote, A day when Abu al Fadl. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that's paraphrasing, a day when Imam al Hussein sought the help of Abu al Fadl al Abbas. A day when Imam Hussein sought the help of his brother Abu al Fadl al Abbas. The author, the poet, then said, You know what? But this is inappropriate for Imam Hussein alayhi salam for me to write this. To say that Imam Hussein, the Imam, sought the help of his brother, maybe this is inappropriate. He did not continue the line. And he stopped there. He went to sleep. That night he saw Abi Abdullah al Hussein salam Allah alayhi. And he said to him, Ya Shaykh, complete the line that you started. Finish it. A day that Imam Hussein sought the help of his brother. Yes. Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura was calling, Amam al Nasirin yansuruna. Isn't there anyone to help us, to support us? And who better fulfilled that support and help than Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas So he woke up 
and he continued the lines of poetry and became a very famous poem that many reciters recite on the pulpits these days. That is Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and his nobility and his manners and his akhlaq that started not only on the day of Ashura, a man who is praised by Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam when, when, uh, when Imam al-Sajjad says, Rahim Allah Ammi al-Abbas, may Allah bless my uncle al-Abbas. All that comes from the combination of the parents, the noble characters of the parents, and the noble upbringing of the child, which calls for us, brothers and sisters, to start following that footsteps and the path. Not easy, requires a lot of effort, a lot of work, from choosing the right spouse to bringing these children the right way with the manners of Ahl al-Bayt, the akhlaq of Ahl al-Bayt, instilling in them the characteristics of honor and the honorable virtues. It all starts from the house so that these individuals, when they grow up, they'll become individuals who are what they call good citizens, good citizens in a community. That starts from their upbringing. When a good character is seen in a child, that good character should be nourished, should be recommended, should be complemented, so that it grows with the child. And on the contrary, if something bad is in that child, he should be trained and taught that this attribute, this thing you're doing is not right. And then this child will grow up to be the follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam insha'Allah, a person who cares about humanity. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessing of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Bab al-Hawa'ij to make us among those who understand who this great man is and to follow the path of this man and to have some of the love that he carried to Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, to his brother Abu, Abu, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. His love to his brother Imam al Hussein was unconditional, unconditional love. Which make us, you know, sometimes wonder when we stand before Imam Hussein and say, Ya laytana kunna ma'akum, we wish that we were there with you on the day of Ashura. Really, would we would have served Imam Hussein with love, with as much love? If we truly love Imam Hussein, do we really have the manners and the attributes of Imam Hussein? Do we follow them? Do we respect one another the way Imam Hussein respected his companions? Do we follow each other the way Imam Hussein السلام, ordered us to treat one another? When it comes to attending this majalis of Imam Hussein, السلام, do we do so? I mean, these centers, these institutions, many of them are called Husseiniyas or Imam Bargas in reference for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yet you find people hardly ever showing up and paying the visitation and being the guest of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So where is the love then? Is it just by words we say we love? Where is the action? And that action is the difficult part. That's what Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was unique for, his actions. So we pray to Allah to make us among those who follow Imam Hussein alayhi salam like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas followed Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Let's raise our hands for the dua, brothers and sisters an honorable day, a holy day. And we are the guest of this man who is Babu al-Hawa'ij, the gate of Hajat. And if you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity and ikhlas at this time, then your dua will not be returned because Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas is a man of honor and he does not turn back his guests. Let us all Raise each other's hands, everybody's hands, insha'Allah. And let's remember those who requested our dua, those who are ill and requested us to pray for their quick recoveries. 
those who are lacking security in the world and requested us to pray for them, those who have need and requested us to pray for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all the mu'mineen and the mu'minat worldwide. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma yujibu al-mudhtar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su'a. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله كفر عنا سيئاتنا يا الله وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا الله إلهي بأبي الفضل العباس ارزقنا زيارة أبي الفضل العباس عاجلا يا الله وشفاعته في الدنيا وفي الآخرة وفي القبر يا الله إلهي بأبي الفضل العباس اقض حوائج المحتاجين يا الله شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله على الخصوص من أوصونا بالدعاء منهم ألبسهم لباس العافية واقض حوائجهم جميعا يا الله إلهي بأبي الفضل العباس اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوى وتمتعه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه إلى هنا مولانا نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة إلا ما رزقتنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح مات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات